Hello, hello, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're finding the roses in the Word of God. And today is Tuesday, um, August the 6th, I believe, yes. And so we are um, continuing on in the miracles of Jesus, and I pray that you're preparing for your miracle like I'm preparing for mine. I'm entrusting the Lord today, I'm believing every day this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to praise God in the good. We're going to praise God in the bad. We're going to just give it all to Him and trust that his word is true and that we can stand on it today um, and not waver that's that's what we've got to do and that's what um, I've been learning um, day by day as I go through trials and storms um, and things that are meant to make me stronger is that if I just continue to hold on to the word from God if I don't hold on to man's word if I don't hold on to what I see but I look to Jesus and I keep my focus forward keep going forward keep going forward in God's word keep singing praises to him even in the midnight hour um, he will he will prove himself to you and just as he has to me so I'm thankful to be with you again today I'm sharing these roses in the word of God and I pray that as you watch today that if something blesses you and it encourages you that you will take the time to share it with someone else that they can be encouraged because there's so many people um, out there that are just looking for something to lift them up they're looking for encouragement they're looking for for life and they're looking for something that will keep them going in the midst of tragedy and chaos and 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 things that we just can't make sense of. Um, so I've got hope for you today, and that hope is in Jesus. He's He's your only hope today. He He's the only one who can change things. He's the only one who can do for you what no pill can do, what no alcoholic beverage can do, what what nothing in life can satisfy but Jesus. He's the only one who can do it for you. Um, if you look to anything else, you'll be disappointed. But if you look to him, you'll you'll be sustained, you'll be healed, you'll be encouraged, you'll be able to carry on when other people fall off and walk away, you'll be able to continue on and do what you need to do for the Lord. And that that's the power of of the cross. That is the power of what Jesus did on the cross for you. He provided a way of escape for you today. He provided healing for you today. He provided healing for your mind, healing for your body, healing for your soul today. And it's all found in Him. It's not found anywhere else. So today we're going to look at another miracle of Jesus. Really the fourth recorded miracle if we if we go in order of, of miracles that Jesus did. He did so many. Um, so many weren't even recorded. So, But this is one that we have that's recorded. And it's actually recorded in three of the four Gospels. So that lets you know that this was a powerful um, impression that was made with this healing and for several reasons why so I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna read each of the three stories for you out of the Bible and I think that'll really make it come to life with each author of the gospel Matthew Mark and Luke um, all tell this telling of the the leper being cleansed and this one's always a powerful one for me uh, it always touches me at my heart because I look at the compassion of Jesus in this and if you're wondering does God love me does he have compassion on me is he concerned about me this 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 one does it all for me um, and, and it tells it in such a beautiful way but let's look at Matthew's telling in chapter 8 of Matthew and he says it this way he says when he Jesus was come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him they were following him for his teaching but they were also following for the miracles this is behold there came a leper and worshipped Jesus. He started with worship. I love that recording of Matthew. And he says, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. He knew God could do it. But he said, are you willing, Jesus? Are you willing to heal me? Are you willing to, to, to reach me today? And Jesus, I love what the, Matthew says. He put forth, Jesus put forth his hand and touched the leper and said I will be thou clean and it says immediately his leprosy was cleansed and Jesus said unto him see that you tell no man but go your way show yourself to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded for the testimony unto them the testimony for cleansing and this is recorded in Leviticus I believe it's chapter 14 or 15 um, where you were to bring a offering for your cleansing when you were made whole and I'm sure 
you know that didn't happen very often um, for someone to be be cleansed and healed in this manner especially for a leper that was a death sentence so let's look at Matthew and then we'll we'll review all of these Matthew um, tells it in um, I'm sorry not Matthew Mark chapter 1 verses 40 through 45 it says it this way same same leper there came a leper to Jesus beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou will thou can make me clean verse 41 of chapter 1 of Mark and Jesus moved with compassion I love that addition that Mark adds there put forth his hand and touched him and he said to him I will be thou clean so the same same words Jesus spoke there but I love that Mark added that Jesus moved with compassion touched the leper he says as soon as he had spoken immediately Immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And straightway he charged him, forth sent him away, and said, See thou, um, say nothing to any man, but go your way and show yourself to the priests, and offer for the cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. So same, same telling. But he went out and began to publish it much. Now Mark gives us this detail that the man who was healed of leprosy went out to tell everyone to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city because of him but was without in the desert places and they came to him from every quarter so this tells us that this is the reason why Jesus had told the man you know don't go and tell everybody but just show yourself to the priest and and get back and and get back into society um, and get back your life um, he did not want him spreading it abroad because he wanted to be able to to heal and teach freely in that city but because of him um, telling which you can't blame him for wanting to tell the miracle that had been done I mean he literally went from being dead to being alive again um, but that limited um, the ministry of Jesus in that area and it caused people to have to be driven out into the desert places to find Jesus you know sometimes we have to be driven <laughs> into the desert place we have to go in a place that's dark a place that's dry and empty and hot <laughs> and, and in a place of, of fiery trials literally a desert would be to find Jesus but that's where you find him you find him in the in the trials of life you find him in the in the difficulties of life you know some people pull away but but people in in this time didn't pull away from going to the desert place because they knew Jesus was there they knew he was present to heal he was present to to give the word that they needed the encouragement that they needed to make it through the difficulties that they were facing so let's look at Luke's telling this is the final third telling of the same story of the leper in chapter 5 verses 12 through 16 it says and it came to pass when he was in a certain city behold a man full of leprosy so Luke gives us those um, extra details as a physician Luke was a physician he was a doctor so he was saying that this man's condition was terminal he was not just uh, he didn't have just one part with leprosy he was full of it this was a death sentence he was literally a walking dead man full of leprosy who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying so he he fell on his face to worship the Lord he, he immediately began to worship and in that worship he, he spoke Jesus if you will I know you can make me whole so he says to him again um, at, at verse 12 saying Lord if you will thou can make me clean and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying I will be thou clean and immediately the leprosy departed from this man and he was charged by Jesus to tell no man but to go and show himself to the priest and offer for the cleansing according to Moses command for the testimony of them so same telling here um, but so much more went there the fame abroad of Jesus to the point the great multitudes came together to hear and they were healed by him of their infirmities Jesus healed their infirmities the word of God came as a healing for their infirmities and it says at verse 16 as an added note here that after all these healings and all this power and love and compassion went out of Jesus that he withdrew himself into the wilderness to pray and you know that's where we find our strength Jesus even the Son of God had had to withdraw from people and 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 the cares of life and he had to withdraw to that secret place in the wilderness 
to pray and to renew himself in the Lord. And you know, all of us have to do that at times, especially if you're in ministry and you're pouring out constantly to people. You've got to take time, as Jesus did. If Jesus did it, you know we've got to do it. To take time to pull away and to pray and refresh ourselves daily so that God can refill us so that we can go out and help others and encourage others. That's that's the whole reason for pulling away and, and seeking the face of God. So let's look at all that is in this beautiful healing of this leper. I, I love it. I love all the, the beautiful points that each author adds. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They each give you details that you need to see the beauty and the compassion of our Savior Jesus. Um, you know, this was a crippling disease. This was a disease that left you literally as a walking dead person. Um, you were alive, but you wished you were dead. You know, maybe some of you... Maybe some of you are in that place. Maybe you've been in that place before. Or maybe you're walking through that place right now where you think that your situation is hopeless, that your situation is you're, you're, just, you're alive, but you don't want to be. You're in a place where you're thirsting for God and you want to know if He's real, but you're afraid to trust because maybe you've trusted before and maybe things didn't turn out the way you wanted them to or maybe you're still battling with a disease or you're battling with depression or you're battling with anxiety and you and fear and you think you'll never ever escape it you've you've been bound by it so long that you believe the lie of the devil to think that this is just how life has to be you have to live but you don't it, it's miserable and this was the life of a leper. It was a miserable, horrible life of isolation. It, it reminds me much of, of anxiety and panic attacks, what it does to you, because I've had those. And that's still at times, um, if, I, if I don't watch, and I'm, what I say by watching, I've got to keep myself in the Word. I've got to keep myself in the love of God, that fearless love that casts out fear because God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. He gives you power and love and a sound mind and that perfecting love in Him, in you, keeps that fear at bay. We, we rebuke it at the name of Jesus. And so, you know, this is the kind of, of sentence that a leper had to walk around to be isolated. Nobody wanted to be near you. And, and that's kind of the way anxiety works. It isolates you from people. You just want to stay indoors. You don't want to leave your house because you just feel like every time you get out that there's panic and there's fear from everything. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just you just can't handle situations. And you know this had to be the life of a leper to go out and to be shunned by people. And let me give you some of the details of how how they were really treated. And this this will break your heart. But this is this is the time of of the leper and how it was. It was it was a disease that was destructive. And to be full of it meant that he had no hope of improvement. That the only thing that was going to happen now is just he was just waiting to die really. So he came to Jesus and some of you may be feeling this way today. I know I, I, I had for several months and, and, and weeks in a row um, just really isolated myself because of a situation. And, and in those situations that you feel that way, you feel a sense of total desperation. You feel a sense of need. And that's what this leper was feeling. He knew there was no hope for him at all. And his only hope in this moment of desperation, and you may be thinking this today, this is me. This is you today. You may be saying, I'm at a, a point in my life where I'm at a, I have a need that only God can take care of. Doctors can't help me. I've tried doctors. I've tried this. I've tried that. Nothing has been a cure for me. This is where this leper was. He's in the same place that some of you out there that are watching are in today. That you have this great sense of need and desperation. You're literally living dead. But Jesus doesn't want you to live dead today. He wants you to come to life. The, uh, come to life in Him. And this leper, you know, the law said that a person literally had to stay six feet away from Him. And if the wind was blowing a certain direction, they had to stay 150 feet away from people. You know, the only thing in the Bible that was worse then coming in contact with a leper was to come in contact with a dead body. Wow, that's something, isn't it? Leprosy was really, what I could call it, was a poster child for sin. 
because that person was labeled as this is a sinner. They're under the severe judgment of God for what they've done. We don't know what they've done, but whatever they did, they basically the people of that time and the rabbis of that time said, you deserve what you're getting, which was not what God thought at all. And Jesus came to show that, didn't he? But, but that's what people thought. They immediately judged, oh, this person is sick because of their sin. And so they didn't want to come in contact with him. But the, but the leprosy really showed if, if it was the sin that was in them, the effects all came out to the outside. You know, most of the time when you're sinning, you're doing wrong, you can look completely healthy to everybody. You can look like you're, you're fine. But in reality, the leper sin, it came out for everyone to see. There was no hiding your sin. There was no hiding the effects of it. It was it was rendering you helpless. It was totally disabling you to the point that again you just felt essentially dead. But you were you had to, you were alive. You had you couldn't you couldn't die unless you took your life. And taking your life is a whole lot worse. Um, and you're going to be a whole lot worse place. But but you know society and the religious scorned the leper. They scorned those who had it as people that were under like I told you the judgment of God. Deserving no pity, deserving no mercy. But I love this. Nevertheless, <laughs> I love that word. We got into that word yesterday. Nevertheless, this leper, despite all he was told by his society, don't go to Jesus. What you have is terrible. It's hopeless. He's not going to help you. No one's going to take you to Jesus. You've never seen Jesus heal a leper before yet. So you don't really have any promise. This is the lies of Satan. You don't have any hope. You know, he's not even giving you an invitation. You know, some people wait for an invitation to come to Jesus. He just wants you to come. He, we don't have to be called by name. Jesus didn't call this man by name. But this man knew who Jesus was. His reputation had gotten around. And this man knew if he could just get to Jesus, just like the one with the issue of blood, if I can just get to Jesus, I don't have to have an invitation for him to call me by name. You know, he probably felt ashamed. He probably felt alone. He probably felt scared to even make this attempt because of his condition to try to get to Jesus. But he didn't let that stop him. He knew that this was, if, if I die, if people kill me for trying to get to him, I'm already dead anyway. I've got to get to Jesus. And so by faith, he believed that Jesus could heal him. By faith, he was willing to do whatever it took. Are you willing today? Are you willing to give up whatever you got to give up? Are you willing to press through whatever you got to press through to get to Jesus today? This man wanted more than healing. He, he wanted cleansing for his soul. He wanted to know his life and his soul were secure, that he was healed inside. And, and what I love about this story is Jesus could have just spoke and said, I will, you're healed. But Jesus didn't do that, did he? I love what he did. I love that, that Mark tells us that he reached out, Jesus did, with his hand. And he touched the untouchable. Can you think of how many years? It breaks my heart, makes me want to cry almost to think about. How long it had been, that, however long this man had had this disease, it might have been years that he had not felt the touch of another human in years. You know, science tells us, even science tells us that the, the power of a touch is very great. Even with babies, we're, we're immediately supposed to bond with them by touching them to our skin and, and, and loving on them. Same thing is true when you get a new pet or, or you're, you're helping someone go through difficulty. Touch makes a difference. The hands on us, someone touching and agreeing with us, someone believing, reaching out that hand to hold our hand, to agree with us on a need. It is a powerful thing, touch is, and Jesus knew that. He knew that this person, this man, had probably went a long time with, without feeling a hand on him. And Jesus, in his compassion, he touched him. He touched the untouchable, the man that no one else would touch. You see, you may be feeling that way today. You may be feeling like I'm untouchable. I, I feel like I'm so full of things that Jesus could never forgive me for. I feel like there's things in my life 
that I prayed for, but, but I haven't seen them come to pass yet, and maybe they're never going to come to pass. Well, that's a lie from Satan today, I want to tell you, that you're not untouchable. Jesus came for you. He came for the untouchable. He came for the ones that need healing. He came for the ones that needed a Savior, that need a physician. If we had it all together, he wouldn't have came. But we don't. We are not perfect people. We don't do everything we're supposed to do all the time. Only through the grace of God and his mercy can we keep coming to him, petitioning him. And he says, I'll keep touching you again and again and again. Just one touch from him today can change your entire situation if you believe, if you trust him. If you know that he will do, he's willing. But are you willing? Are you willing to give your situation to him today? By his word, by his touch, Jesus said, I'm willing. I'm here for you. I'm willing to touch you, but will you touch me? That's what Jesus is asking. He's not only got the power to heal you today, but he's also willing to show you grace, mercy, love, forgiveness, compassion, concern. That he's God today. He's God. He's a God who loves. But he's also a God full of power to heal you and change your situation that you're in right now. I, I love the word immediately that is, that is witnessed here. In all three accounts, immediately, instantly, everything. For years that, that this man had been tormented. The torment left instantly. Instantly. He was changed. He was healed. And Jesus says to him, go and show yourself to the priest. But don't tell everyone because I want to be able, able to, to continue to work in this area. Now the man disobeyed and he went out and told. And I, I honestly, I can't blame him for telling because to be dead and to be made alive. You know what? We all are told by God. The funny part of this story is this man was told not to tell and he did. But you know, Jesus has told us to go and tell what he's done for us and we don't isn't that ironic God has done so much for us he's done so many amazing things for us as his children but so many times we keep it to ourselves and we don't tell anybody about the miracles that he's done we don't tell anybody about things but this man was told not to tell and he told everybody we need to tell we need to testify we need to tell people of the love of God. We need to tell them that God still saves, that God still delivers, that God still heals, that he still brings back to life the dead. He did for me. When he saved you, he brought you as a dead thing that was in sin to life. And you need to be telling people about it. You need to be sharing about it. And if you haven't been cleansed, it's as easy as praying a simple prayer today with me, saying, Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of my sins, that you come into my heart, that you cleanse me and make me whole, that you let me recognize your love and your compassion, that you died on that cross for my sins and you rose again on the third day and I believe that when you return, now because I've accepted your blood on my life, that I'm forgiven, that I'm free, and that I'm going to be going home with you when you come to get your bride. That's a simple prayer. Simple as that. Jesus, I need you today. And he will come into your situation. He will come into your life just as he did. This leper came to Jesus. Jesus didn't come to him. Jesus didn't call him by name. The leper decided, I'm sick of living like this. I'm living dead. I'm tired of it. When you get to a place where you're tired of where you're living and you're tired of what you're doing and see it's not getting you anywhere, then that's the place where Jesus can do more for you than you can imagine. When we just get to that place of surrender and we say, enough is enough. I'm going to get to Jesus. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what I have to do to get to him. I'm going to get to Jesus today. This, this pushed this man into a place where he got what he needed from the Lord because he pushed by faith. And as he pushed by faith, Jesus was there to hold his hand out and touch him and say, I'm willing. I'm willing to meet you. Jesus is willing to meet you right where you are. You don't have to try to clean yourself up. You don't have to try to make things better or, or do anything. All you have to do is just simply confess that you need a Savior today. He's there for you in your situation. Whatever you're facing, he's real. 
and he is a present help in your time of trouble today. I pray this word has helped you. I know it's helped me as I've went through because I need this word just as much as anyone else. I pray you're blessed today. I pray that you walk in the power that God has provided for you and not only his power, but walk in his love and his grace today for you. He cares for you. He knows every detail of your life down to your hairs. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares today. God bless you. Share this with someone today. Give me comments. I love the comments that I've been reading. So excited about those. That encourages me when I know that I'm helping you through the word of God. And that's it's not me helping you. It's Jesus in me helping you. That That's what it is. And I give him all the glory and all the praise for it. He's my rock. He's my fortress. And I pray that today you decide to make him yours as well. God bless you and I'll see you soon.